Hey guys, in this video we're gonna talk about the things you could or should get when you're starting to play Alex Online that you won't miss out on later on in the game so that you won't think you wish you had it known earlier or sooner. First up, there's the bags. Where to get bigger bags would be pretty interesting for you to know because you might struggle on these along the line. So first of all, uh, about bags, when you start out the game, the first thing you're gonna do is you finish your tutorial, you come into the city and you're gonna want to run to the bank. Now to why to the bank, because that's where you can buy the first expansion of back and bank. Simply trade to the NPC. For Empire, it's up in the corner. And here's where you can buy bigger bags and bigger banks. So this is gonna cost you about 80 to 90 gold in the beginning. Now this is maybe something you wouldn't have at the beginning. This means peanuts to anyone playing the game, so I would just suggest you to go zone chat and ask around for people to give like 100 gold so you can buy bank and bag. Now for um, for our server, I'm quickly gonna mention it. Every time so we see someone new, we're sending him automatically a mail, some posting game with uh, a faster amount, some gold, explanation where to get the bank and the bag, etc. So this will be standard here if you do, if you join League on pay to play. For anywhere else, I would just ask around for the gold. Alright, so then the next expansion in bags that you can get is from GT, Colossus Tower, which is a level 45, 40. Right now, it's in JJ Shard. There's gonna be Taps Pyramid, which is in Erdrich, and there's gonna be Eclipse, which is in Umwar. Every last boss of these raids is going to drop the bag, so make sure you kill the last boss. Just be careful not to one-shot them, especially the lower level ones like GT, uh, because that one will bug out and not give you any loot, and then you will have to wait until the next weekly reset to do the raid again. I would advise if you do the boss, just take off your weapons, so that you cannot go wrong with this. Simply unequip both weapons to be safe if you're not sure what damage your class is scaling your weapon with. For people that would rather have a visual, um, like a snapshot where you can remember quickly where to get the bags from, etc. There's a screenshot right on the screen. And I'll put the link to the screenshot down in the description. It's directing to Dragolots, it's a page of mine that I made and at the bottom there is the, uh, the screenshot shown along with some other information. And then once you've done uh, the GT taps and eclipse raid and you want a bigger bag then those bags are already available the next bags are going to be found on the 3v3 slash 6v6 ranked npc for empire that's right there in the corner and you want to go trade um for symbols of blood symbols of blood is a currency that you can get for opening prophetic cards when you open prophetic cards you will get vanity items like costumes and when you already have the costume that drop, then they give an alternate currency, which is this symbol of blood. There's a video, a link in the up in the corner, that's gonna bring you to prophetic cards and explain you how prophetic cards works for people that don't know. So this is the bag, the 60 slot bag um, that you can get for the symbols of blood. Next in line, 60 slots is the marks of accomplishments. And this is where you can buy the rest of the bags. I believe it's under convenience. Yep. So then you have 66 slots. You have 72, 78, and then you have the biggest 84 slot. Marks of, of, of marks of accomplishment is a currency you can get by helping to advertise the game, whether it is publishing websites or web pages about the game, making videos via the content creator program all of that is viable to get these marks they also do forum events about the game and they also do in-game events um, and give you marks depending on that you also can get marks for the tournaments they do every so often so there's quite a few ways to get marks but they're not as um, consistent so you have to kind of watch out when these events are happening and whether you can or want to participate to get these marks but that is basically how you can get all the bags and all the upgraded bags 
then to quickly cover the topic on banks the biggest bank you can get is the bank of 144 slots which you can just buy for the similar blots as well via prophetic cards or you simply hand in the eclipse bag which is a bag you can get from killing eclipses last boss and you hand them in at the bank in pc as well and they'll exchange it for a bank slot expand the safe deposit box and then you'll get a bank in um, for trading your back in you can also trade in uh, lower tier bags and you get lower tier banks but you cannot downscale as you can see with me i don't have an option because i already have the biggest bank but if you're gonna have if you're gonna start out and you will do gt twice in a row meaning you have one bag from gt you do you'll do gt again because you want a bigger bank then you can get hand in gt's back and you'll get a bank for that instead the biggest bank for pay to play again is the 144 slot one the next topic is going to be about changing your classes because people usually restart or reroll new characters so they can try different classes. You can of course do that, that's totally fine, uh, but you have to restart every time a new character so that might be time intensive for people. There's something called as a class score morpher which is an item that lets you uh, switch between classes in the game. Now for people that are uh, used to free to play, you only could get them by buying. In pay to play there are a few other ways. One of the most popular and easy ways to get them is simply by an auction house. Every week at Monday, nine, uh, 7 in the evening, this begins. It's like a bidding that goes for all the core morphers. It's the same as a free-to-play, but once you win these core morphers on free-to-play, you have to pay another, I believe, 500 crystals, which is 5 euros, uh, to actually unlock this core morpher and then be, you be able to use it. On pay to play you simply win the core morpher from the auction house and it's good to go good to use they all start at 5000 gold and then whatever else comes after that is up to the players what they're willing to bid for these core morphers are a one-time change your class to that new class now remember that you can always go back to your default class via your trainer so any trainer npc is allowing you to go back to your default class which is a class that's kind of like your main class and you can always go back to that no matter what um so when you have a normal core morpher you can then switch to any class you like one time go so you switch one time to the class and then you're stuck on that class until you go back via the trainer npc or you use another core morpher these biddings always last from monday 7 in the evening until saturday 7 in the evening so Saturday uh, at 7, they usually run out and the bidding war begins between people. Every time a new bid is placed on this, they extend the bid by I believe 5 minutes until the biggest price has been paid for the core morphers. So that's one way to change your class um, all the time. Another way to change your classes is via your orders. So there's an order uh, system in the game. A video about orders can also be found in the link up there. Uh, but quickly capitalized here about uh, core morphers so when you get your order and you are first in your order every two weeks because the orders last every two weeks you then get rewarded with a core morpher in your order npc and this core morpher also lasts 14 days this is a petrified core morpher not a core morpher like on the auction that means that this core morpher will remain for the so to speak amount of days that it's gonna last you have core morphers in different uh, time durations the one from the order lasts two weeks uh, orders last two weeks as well so if you manage to remain top number one on your order every time then you basically have a petrified core morpher for an infinite amount of time this core morpher allows you to switch between your default class and the class you pick on the core morpher uh, unlimited infinite amount of times uh, for 14 days in total then there is one more source that I can tell you guys about uh, changing your classes and that is unfortunately for many of you uh, via the marks of accomplishment store. So they sell all petrified core morphers as well with already predefined pre classes so you just pick whatever class you want to switch to but these are lasting half a year so that's quite a lot longer than the one from order. And then there's also the Omnificent which is basically the Omega uh, because it has all the classes in one. And it also lasts half a year. Again, also the one-time core morpher like on Auction House. But on Auction House, it's also the pre different classes uh, that you can get. And that is everything about core morphers. Uh, so that is also how you can change your class. Uh, for people that are still leveling, 
and you have a collector's edition that you bought in the past and those are also giving you usually a core mode for that last seven days because they want you to try different classes depending on um, the patch changes they would give um, be careful because the gear that you have equipped when you're on any game use a core mode for the game has a system in place that it switches the gear according for the new class it's not working for leveling gear so your gear that you equip for example you're a plates class like a warrior and you just feel like going mage which is a cloth class all the gear will not be usable you'll be naked and you'll have to uh, get gear from whatever source possible to you so keep that in mind if you do want to switch class while leveling your gear will not uh, be adjusted make sure you have leveling boxes i guess ready for if you do change your class so that you have gear ready uh, to jump into that new class that is all about the core morphers then the following useful thing that would be nice uh, if you probably had known sooner if no one ever told you is probably that you can buy extra talent points rubies and stats uh, from the real guard npc so real guard npc is something i don't believe free to play has um, so real guard npc is right here so for empire is on the 3v3 npc as shown before but just next to him um, and you can just buy scrolls, stats, rubies uh, for Rilgar. So again, Rilgar, quickly explained, is a currency that you your guild gets and that is distributed to all the members depending on their guild rank. So basically on Sundays, there's going to be um, there's going to be six fights happening uh, between six player groups from different guilds and those guilds will just simply queue up in a, in a system and every 20 minutes they'll have to fight each other and then the more fights you win the more points you get in your rank and at the end of the sunday dominion they'll see which rank you are on the higher your position for your guild the more real guard you will get um, in the end then on wednesday there's going to be another 12 uh, player group raid pvp which is going to be basically giving guilds a chance to attack other guilds and still get some bonus regards from that if you lose or win depending on that also will influence your total granted real guard then you still have some spark rubies influencing your real guard such as here and then there's also real guard bonuses in your guilds uh, rubies so all that uh, considered you get real guard on when the week resets which is thursday morning at four o'clock uh, when logged in also considering what tablet you have will also determine how much real guard you get so there's quite a few multipliers in there but once you just simply get your real guard you can spend it here on these uh, talent points stats and rubies there's a total of three two rubies you can get there's a total of 60 90 stats you can get and there's a total of two three talent points you can get extra from real guard i thought this would be simple information to let you know because i think a lot of people are not aware of this and that is why domains are also still important on pay to play just as they are on the free to play And while we're on about bonus uh, rubies, if there's a hidden ruby you can still get by getting it from the battlegrounds NPC. This is a ruby you can only get once in a lifetime, so you simply buy this with 1500 battleground emblems, which you get by simply going battlegrounds or you do your daily trial of blood. This is going to give you a bonus ruby. I thought that mention is out, point is out, because this is a ruby that is not mentioned among your world mysteries. This is something you're just going to have to see or find uh, by watching vendors. So here's that you know it, another ruby uh, for your collection. Another really handy thing to show you guys is that because some players didn't know about this and they were kind of struggling and just waiting in purgatory, as you probably played free to play before um, you just simply have to get mirror from the goblin if you're out of mirror and you cannot get out of the goblin you have to open the boutique by your mirror with boutique crystals and get out that way in pay to play we have a goblin here and this is where you can buy simply mirror there's also a story behind this related this is uh, in the lore uh, explains how these goblins get here so i'm gonna leave that out as a hint that you know if you like the lore it's explained in the in the lore but this is where you can get extra mirror you simply buy the mirror from that guy and then you go here and this guy simply takes your mirror for it so that is something handy to get out of 
purgatory if you don't have Mera. You can simply buy it for gold in pay to play as well. Well, we're on the topic of Mira. Don't just buy your Mira anywhere in Starnot, guys, because it depends which NPC you go to. As an example, I can give you, and I believe this is a different uh, bug, so this is probably not working as intended, depending on the discount that you have from your rank. I'm not sure you should check for yourself if it works for you too. But um, if I buy at certain vendors, I only pay 1012 for this amount. This is also most maps I checked. However, if you do check, for example, a random leveling map like Kolberg, you then will see that you're going to pay a full amount, I believe. This is the base price. And this is where I think that this discount is not working on all NPCs. As you can see, you pay it to full 1250 here. So that's a 250 gold difference. Then if we go to our main um, island instead, and we just check the mirror in Lighthood, then we will find an NPC that's going to ask a different price than those two we've seen before, which is 1068. So there's now three different prices and this is all I found. So if you want the cheapest price, make sure you go to the right places, look a bit around for the cheapest and then just simply remember what the cheapest one is. As we've just seen before in the, pre in the previous step, the, the gold cost from the mirror NPC in the purgatory is also asking the full price and not considering your discount to continue the conversation on rank rank is something you get over time and you can check that by typing in slash rank and you're going to see that you get points assigned for every point of service now a point of service is something you get for every active week basically thursday is the start of a week if you log in within Thursday until Wednesday you will get one point for that week and summing up your points you'll get rank so tw playing 20 weeks, playing 54 weeks, playing 108 weeks etc. Then you get these uh, ranks assigned and depending on which rank you have you'll have a slight benefit bonus so that is simply just playing actively. There's also another command called slash plate and then it's going to show you your total amount of days that you have been playing online. Now this is your active online playtime, so if you're someone that they've case a lot in game, that's going to contribute to this. But there is nothing that benefits your playtime, there is no goal to go for. It's simply some kind of uh, thing to track for, to see how fast you can do things if you're doing a fresh charter. But there are no benefits tied to the play to command. Then the next thing I'm going to show you guys is some kind of little cheat you can do. Now, I, at first I thought this was a bug as it was also reported by me quite a long time ago. Again, confirmed by a friend of mine that also told me about it. But then so much time later, I'm assuming this is more of like a hidden uh, feature, I guess, than a bug. The thing I'm mentioning about is the when you're crafting gear, you're going to have to pay meteor threat, meteor shards. And these meteor shards are becoming more expensive or a higher quantity is required every new uh, season we go into to make gear. So we need these work pieces to craft tier 2 gear and it's requiring 32 at this point. If you, if you go back in the previous seasons, this is legendary. You see that you needed, um, sorry, fabled, you needed 16, which is half. Then legendary needed eight, so which is also half. Uh, epic he needed uh, four, and then blue needed uh, two. So you can see that every time a new layer was opening, uh, the cost was doubling in price. And then green needed only one, and this was viable for every profession. So this is for weaponsmithing. This is also for blacksmithing. This is also for leatherworking, but not for tailoring. And that is where I think is the cheapest uh, cheat here. So if I filter on work pieces, you can see that here's every new layer. And these work pieces are not evaluating as the others have been. So you can see epic was three shards. And then we go to legendary only requires four. And then uh, we go to fabled only requires five. And then we are now in relic which requires only six. So I'm assuming for leatherworking they either fuck up the multiplier in the code for this and it only requires one more fragment instead of doubling the amount for the other professions. I'm not sure if this is some kind of a sorry excuse for cloth players because we do know that cloth players are a lot squishier than leather and plate players. I am not sure but this is like a hidden trick guys. If you wanna gear up cheap and you wanna save on mid shards, just simply try to craft cloth gear. 
and then have core morphers ready to switch your class to in between to equip the equipment and then switch back to the class you originally play just so you know this is like a hidden trick um where it's more cheaper for you to craft these um rather than the other ones of course and then the last trick we're going to show in this video that also has to do with profession is a hidden trick here with double looting which is going to be handy on end game maps this is working uh to confirm on our rehabs and in Suslanger as well right now um so when you have your professions um in my case i have weaponsmithing and blacksmithing that is two professions that require you to mine nodes now when you have two of those professions on one character and you have the required level to mine for both then you will see that i can loot basically double materials so it takes the first loot which is gonna make the notes disappear and you see that you loot the ore but then it's gonna loot again even though the notes have disappeared and i believe that's a visual bug but it allows it to, to to loot again a second time because you have the second profession that you require to mine notes if you see on the character that has only one profession you see that he only allows to loot once and that's it so that confirms that you, when you have the double profession and this is only for uh, the mining I suppose because the other professions have a different mechanic uh, this allows you to simply mine double as much ore on your runs this is very handy for people with these professions that want to do weapon smithing or blacksmithing this is working in our rehats this is working in Sustanger unfortunately it does not work in KOE because KOE only has one node literally one node visually showing per area that they can loot um, ore from so that's another small little hidden trick that I want to give with you guys and with that trick we're gonna close the video out here I think that's quite a lot of few things that uh, you probably wish you would have known sooner I hope this is gonna help you guys um, in your gameplay that it just helps anywhere that you just have more information now uh, some things maybe that you didn't know before you knew now if you did learn something about Alots Online this time please consider liking the video and subscribing uh, check out my website also, also that I made called Dragolots it's in the description there's a lot of information there that I'm trying to keep track of as well and updating when I have the time for it um, I'm also streaming on Twitch guys X Dragon X um, if I don't really do videos that I'm more like streaming streaming is more chill to me it requires less work so when I'm feeling a bit lazy you might see me streaming instead of just making the videos as I have been active inactive for a while on YouTube now uh, quickly some extra news that I want to shove into this video as well guys um, for people that didn't know yet Russia Russian Alos online has been exploding in popularity because of the war between Ukraine and Russia because the sanctions Russia has been cutting off uh, Russian gamers from the Western world from basically anywhere except Russia So all the Russian gamers have been cut off Western games and that includes also World of Warcraft Which is a big name of course we all know that and that is why they're looking for alternatives and they got back to Alots online That is why when people were wondering about it why Alots has been exploding in popularity Unfortunately only in Russia servers EU is still struggling with population and players uh, But I'm happy that Alots is getting more eyes now Especially from the Russian community, I'm just hoping it's going to affect or go over to EU as well at some point. Um, but so for people that weren't that were still, Alos is really kind of starting to revive again because the war in Ukraine versus Russia. I'm all against the war, I'm not saying anything positive about it, but it is positive for Alos, unfortunately, that this has happened. Thanks guys for watching, hope you learned something. See you guys next time, have a good day, bye bye.